along the backbone, as the geometry tells you to, you go to the PDB and calculate and blah, blah, and figure out where to put these X's, and there's our model for the backbone. We complete the model for the backbone to a model for the protein and in sort of the obvious way. If this in oxygen is bonded to, where are we, to this hydrogen, draw an edge and put an X on the edge under the same conditions. There's a three frame at one end, there's a three frame at the other, and either it's cheaper to go straight across or to twist. And in this way, we produce a tap graph with X's on it. Fair enough? Um, and again, I guess with you guys, I hardly need to say it, but I will anyway, just with a picture, We're capable, here we go. Of course, a fat graph determines a skinny surface, you know, fatten it up, uh, here indicated for just the theta with a little tail on it, and here indicated for the torus with a little tail on it, and the x's in this model just being put in a half twist. So now we're studying not fat graphs in oriented or orientable surfaces as we usually do in modulox space, but in fact we're forced to consider non-orientable surfaces and fat graphs with X's on them. And you'll see we're forced by kind of the vagaries of the fact that we are dealing with real life data where there's errors and experimental uncertainties. And someone could have already objected and said, yeah, okay, fine, we're going to put an X, but what if I can't tell? What if it's so? What if it's a tie? Well, it won't be a tie exactly, of course, to however many digits you want to do. But what if the tie, it's a tie to within the experimental uncertainty? Then you're going to put an X or not? And so you see, we better be careful. We better be careful if we are going to use the fat graph, which is to say the corresponding surface, to say anything about proteins. We had better take only robust invariants of the surface we're going to use them as descriptors of proteins, and that's precisely what we're going to do. Uh, let me, yeah, good. Let's come up here. There's the model. And here's the idea, how we proceed. So, idea. OK, we got a protein that we take from the protein data bank. We build in the manner I just described its fat graph. So I should put what these are. We start off with a protein, we build the corresponding fat graph, and now we derive from that fat graph, say the surface associated <coughs> with it, is the corresponding surface, which again may be orientable or non orientable in this case. And now the idea is to take topological, uh, even geometric, even sort of geochemical properties, as I'll explain, of this as descriptors for the protein in order to try and understand a classification of proteins. And like I said, we had better be careful that the arrows over here don't change too much under errors over here, because we know from this data bank there, errors are rife. So we had better be careful with these descriptors. So the idea is use uh, fat graph properties properties and various as protein descriptors. So I guess in the interest of time, let me kind of move. Well, no, here, let me think of some things that are certainly worth saying. In fact, the, as you can well imagine, this graph, the underlying graph of the fat graph that I've described to you is so natural. It's just you draw the backbone and put, put edges whenever there is a hydrogen bond. It's so natural that uh, the biophysicists, of course, draw this graph too. But what we've provided here is a fattening on that graph. And here's the fact, the basic fact, is that uh, this fattening, on the usual, and by that I mean the, the usual graph that the biophysicists would draw, just the, the hydrogen bonds, on the usual graph is the unique one, is the unique one, unique fattening, unique one, uh, so that the topological type, say the number of boundary components, is robust. In, in a sense that I think I won't bother to make precise, but it just means a few errors cause the topology to change just a little bit. This can be made precise, so I think I won't bother in the interest of time. 
so that uh, the topological type uh, of this FGP is robust. And again, one has to make this precise and we have it <coughs> under, under errors. So the idea is to, for example, use the topological type. And I think, let me just cut to the chase and show you our very first color pictures. This was this goes back two years, and some of the graduate students will remember Jorn and I sort of screaming, you know, you get hers down the hallway uh, with the following pictures. So let me find that page. And again, I want to get to some continuum models, so I'm, so I'm sort of hustling. So here we better look at the page. And I hope you'll allow me to leave this kind of sideways. I hope that's all right. So let me explain. The biophysicists already have, move over here. So, uh, there is, there is already a classification, classification uh, of so-called protein globules, which are subsets of proteins, which in effect you should think of as folding independently. It's a rough definition of protein globules. Uh, it's a hierarchical, hierarchical classification called path solid. Uh, maybe I won't so much go into this except to say it's hierarchical. So at a given level of the classification, no, I should say a little bit about this. Uh, on a certain level, namely at this, uh, it, the C level just determines uh, a certain category of the hydrogen bond, the propensity of the hydrogen binding to fall into one of two standard patterns that I think I will bother telling you called alpha uh, helices and beta strands. So this you can compute in effect from the tertiary structure. On the A level, it's a bunch of guys sitting around in a room saying, that looks like a horseshoe. And, no, it doesn't. That looks like a sandwich. No, it doesn't. That, I mean, it, it's human mediated. And this is disturbing, to, presumably, to a mathematician. On the other hand, we shouldn't dismiss the importance of what these guys have done. It's, it's important, but it's a little uh, annoying to a mathematician that we have to go ask somebody, you know, does that, does that look like a horseshoe to you or does it look like a sandwich? And that's already on the second level of the classification. Let me just say that uh, there are about, you know, do you remember, uh, 160K globules in from the PDB. I think that's, it's 100, sorry, it's 114,000, I can't remember, 114,000 globules derived from this protein data bank. And on this H level, there are about 3,000 classes. Again, I'm just trying to give you a sense of how crude. There, there are three classes here, and maybe a couple hundred here, and blah, blah. And it gets down to about 3,000 here. Uh, so what we did here, these first experiments we did, we plotted uh, the genus isn't quite good enough, because the genus is not robust, our usual notion of genus. So you define a modified genus, G star, which is the usual genus if orientable if orientable in uh, the usual genus of a non-orientable surface, the number of, of, uh, of uh, projective planes, divided by two if not orientable. So you have to modify the notion of genus. And then we plot the modified genus and, and the number of boundary components at a given level in this classification. And what we did is, uh, okay, that on a given level, there are the daughter class classes, and we can color the appearances of genus and number of boundary components on this level by the names of the daughters. So if this was nonsense, if the genus, if the topological type was nonsense, you would in one of these plots see just colors. In other words, our topological classification would have nothing to do with the biophysicist classification. But in fact, you see, the colors agglomerate quite nicely into clumps. And this was the point at which I think we all we we believed we were onto something with some with some enthusiasm. We've gone on, and again, let me just say this very quickly because I'm really impressed with time now. Uh, we've gone on and used these two invariants and a couple of others, the length and the number of number of x's along the backbone, actually, 
to 